Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts. Here with a warning, I do believe. It is an experience that one of our viewers had. His name is Calvin. And he wanted me to, he wanted to share this. And I'm reading what he sent me. And I think you should hear this. Sometimes we snooze, we lose. And when people can't make up their mind and they think they have all the time in the world, sometimes those are the very ones Satan has his mark on. Listen to this. I got saved when I was 27 back in 1976. I started witnessing to some of the people I worked with. One of them was named Dude. He managed the farm for my father. He liked to talk rough and tell off-color jokes, but he wasn't really tough, but very likable. I had witnessed to him and some of those who worked with him. His wife was a Christian, and I believe some of the best, some of the rest of his family were too. Listen to this. Anyway, one Friday afternoon, I was coming back from Jackson, Mississippi, I believe, and it was shortly after I had gotten saved. As I neared home while coming down the highway, I started crying uncontrollably. Now, this is Pat's two cents. I'm going to come back to it. That is what you call travailing in the spirit. That happens from time to time. Sometimes we don't know who it's for until after things start to un unveil and things start to happen. But that is called travailing. It happened to me one time when I was in church and they had an altar call with a bunch of piercings and, and gothic uh, kids at the altar getting saved. And I felt this travail on me and I was like, what is going on? What am I booing about? And one of the people next to me who was crying a few seats over said, God's put the spirit of travail on us to get them saved. And that's when I started to realize what that was. So listen to this. I'm going to read that sentence again so it flows. Okay. As I neared home, while coming down the highway, I started crying uncontrollably. For some reason, I knew that I had, I knew I had to get in touch with dude. So I called him on the farm radio and told him I needed to talk to him. He answered me and said he was heading back out of the farm and uh, with the payroll, I believe. So I thought I'd see him Monday. After all, I had been witnessing to him already. On Monday, I came in at noon to eat dinner. And for some reason, I had not heard the news. I guess I had been working away somewhere. I remembered as I was about to take a bite of my lunch, my wife said, have you heard about dude? I said, no. She said, Calvin, dude is dead. I dropped my fork in my plate and said, dude's gone to hell. The funeral was totally unlike any other funeral, according to the Baptist preacher who had a big influence on me getting saved. This preacher told me that he had never seen anything like it. Just about all the pallbearers were the same type as dudes. In other words, they like to laugh at dirty jokes with the crowds and talk rough, etc. They, of course, were down front in the church. Dude had two Baptist ministers, the one who had influenced me, who also knew and liked Dude, and his wife's minister. First, my minister had some very good remarks, and then Dude's wife's minister got up. He said, I like Dude. Dude bought me candy. He brought me Coca-Colas. But the last time I talked to Dude, I told him he needed to get saved. He told me that he just didn't have time. Of course, this was said with dude lying there dead in front of him. 
dude had died that weekend between that Friday when I was crying and Monday when I heard he died while he died while sitting back in his recliner. Whoa. Here's another one. Sometimes about 1997, I had a dream that I was in hell. I was given, it was given to me to show me the horrors of hell. There were pieces of people on granite slabs and non-stop cursing. The words were so vile. They would put even the worst Hollywood movie to shame. And this cursing was trying to penetrate the middle of my chest, my heart, and it seemed very hard to resist. I was desperate, but I said in the, in the dream, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and there were some golden stairs, and I got out of there. Again, it was very horrible. That when I later tried to write down this experience, the very thoughts of it made me turn my head away from the typewriter word processor screen. People do not realize what they are messing with. Wow. Now, Ronnie says he can brag all he wants about not being afraid of burning in hell forever because he really does not believe in a literal hell. Like so many people, he thinks that just because he does not believe in it, it makes it disappear. Not believing in something that God says is a fact does not make it fiction. Hmm like millions before him who also didn't believe in a literal hell, he is in for a rude awakening. By the time he does believe in it, it will be too late for him. Signed, Renee. Wow. This was him talking about Ronnie Reagan's son. Hmm. Mm -mm. Wow. Well, anyway, listen, you guys, I always feel like this. If you, this is Pat's two cents. If you want insurance, you know, we pay for insurance. We go to the real estate agent and we buy auto insurance. We buy house insurance. We buy health insurance, 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 and life insurance, insurance. But guess what? There's no real insurance until you know that you know that you know that your life is covered by the blood of Jesus. Excuse me. If you, I mean, you got to know that. Because let me tell you this, you guys. What Jesus gives is free. It's totally free. F-R-E-E. -E. You do not have to pay. He's already paid the price. Jesus paid it all. All to him, I owe. Sin left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. He knows that our strength is small, that we're weak. He knows that we're frail. He knows we're messed up, inside and out. But let me tell you this. The answers you're looking for, the answers you're searching for, those things you're scratching and digging for, for something to happen deep within, only comes, only comes through God. Comes from God through his son, Jesus Christ. So to me, since it's free, it would behoove you, maybe you think, to at least jump in and get to know God for yourself. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. Don't play Russian roulette with your time 
for your life and definitely with your soul. That's not a good game to play. You see what happened to do. Anyway, God bless you. And I hope you're listening. Yeah. It's not a play thing.